How's it going, Red Wings fans? Today we are going to talk about Jonathan Bergeron, a second round draft selection from the 2018 NHL Draft, one of the last selections done by Ken Holland before Steve Eisenman took over in 2019. Jonathan Bergeron has been something of a story. He has fought injuries, he has fought coming over to North America, he has fought the ever-growing depth of the Detroit Red Wings, and that's the only reason he's really not on the NHL roster full-time right now. Bergeron is a playmaking player. He has a really good pass, he has a really good shot, very hard worker, very high character player. Right now in his time with the Red Wings this season, in a nine game stint, he had two goals, three assists for five points. And in the AHL with the Grand Rapids Griffins, he has 18 goals, 27 assists for 45 points in 42 games played. A large margin from the second best player, Carter Mazur, who has 29 points in 44 games played. So our last couple videos have been talking about potential players we could go after, Noah Hannafin and Jake Gensel to be specific. There's most likely going to be another video before the trade deadline coming this week. And in those videos, we have talked about what we are most likely going to have to give up. And usually it's a first round or a second round draft pick um, along with a good prospect. And mainly it's been the talk of Jonathan Burke. Now, there has been talk around Jonathan Bergeron, whether it's been trade talks already earlier this season and a proposedly rejected contract extension. Both sources coming from David Panada in this specific article on the fourthperiod.com. He says, but word is he recently rejected a contract extension pitched by the Red Wings and wants a shot at a full-time NHL gig, something he clearly isn't getting right now in Detroit. Around five teams, including Calgary and Montreal, have expressed interest. There is some benefit to this, is that you can package up him with a NHL roster player like Paul Mata. If it's a really good player, you could potentially package him with Gasta Spear or even a NHL forward, essentially upgrade that roster player. Trade in Gasta Spear or Hall or Mata and get Hannafin. The downside to trading a player like Bergman is that we haven't even seen his full potential. He really hasn't had a full NHL season where he hasn't felt like he's fighting for a job. That was supposed to be the season, but with all the free agent signees, it pushed Bergman down to the AHL where he's been tearing it up, but unfortunately can't get a call up right now. The other downside is, and while it does seem maybe not the biggest concern for an NHL team, which is more or less a business, is that he is a very high character guy. This article by Caitlin Glaza over on OctopusThrower.com titled Several Reasons Why the Detroit Red Wings Should Avoid Trading Jonathan Bergeron. Essentially, she talks about Bergeron and meeting him and the kind of character that he is and how he likes to have fun and enjoys his time playing hockey, which is more important than people would like to believe. And that is what Eisenman wanted. He wants high character, high skill hockey players to be on his roster. So trading away Bergeron could lead to potentially going against the approach of building a really good hockey team full of high character guys who are playing for themselves. That's really why the Red Wings are doing so well this season is that every guy in that locker room is playing for each other. They want to see each other succeed and the team to win as a unit, not just individually. Now as to what Iserman is most likely going to do, there has been a lot of noise around Detroit. One coming from Brian Chapman, more from ESPN's Emily Kaplan on the Red Wings at the trade deadline. I asked one of his rival GMs what to expect. He said, I expect something big, just something that you wouldn't expect. Also coming from Red Wings prospects, Kaplan on the Wings trade deadline, Wings looking to buy, looking to move a blue liner, looking at impact forwards. Asked a rival GM what to expect from Eisenman, probably something big. And you're not going to get something big without giving up something big. Edmondson is untouchable, Nate Danielson's untouchable, Sandin Pelica is untouchable, Kosa is probably untouchable, and there's a few other prospects that are most likely untouchable. Johnson Bergeron is one of the high skill, high trade value guys that is likely touchable because he's just been put in a replaceable spot. Yes, he could very well and very easily develop into a top six forward, but we have a strong top six. And if they want to make the playoffs right now, training him for a player that could immediately fit into that top six is much more likely than pulling him up into the top six and hoping that he's able to swim and not sink. 
What do you guys think? Are the Rummies going to trade Bergeron? If they do, who is it going to be for and what is the package going to look like? Let us know down below. And until next time, lights on the red light district.